Hello, welcome to this introductory session on implementation science, brought to you from the Implementation Network of Ireland and Northern Ireland. My name is Neve O'Rourke from the Health Information Quality Authority. This is a shorter taster version of our live training sessions, which are run periodically throughout the network. These are interactive group sessions exploring relevant case studies. This is module one. What is implementation science? There are three other modules which will be recorded for this series. These are module two, determinants and strategies, module three, models and frameworks, module four, monitoring and evaluation. These will be delivered by other members of the implementation network, Andy and Julie. During this introductory session, we will introduce you to the key concepts of implementation science. We will talk about implementation strategies, key models and frameworks, monitoring and evaluation, examples of good practice, and we'll also signpost you to some resources and further information that's available to you. Over the course of the four modules, we hope that you'll gain an understanding of the key concepts in implementation science, and how to apply them in practice where you work. We will also discuss how implementation science drives quality delivery, effectiveness and improved outcomes for service users. We will also introduce you to some of the many implementation tools and resources that are available. So what is implementation science? Take a moment to jot down what you think it is. You could even pause this recording while you do that. We have a growing body of evidence and knowledge about what works, informed by research and practice. However, the outcomes for people using services have not improved in line with advances in knowledge. Despite our advances in research and knowledge, the desired outcomes for clients or service users are not always achieved. This is sometimes called the implementation gap, the difference between what we know works in theory and what actually happens in practice. There is often a gap between what the research says and what is done in practice. Implementation is all about translation of evidence into practice. You will learn how to bridge the implementation gap using what we call implementation strategies. So Bauer defines implementation science as a scientific study of methods to promote the systematic uptake of research findings and other evidence-based practices into routine practice to improve the quality and effectiveness of services. Note the terms here, it's systematic, it's evidence-based, and it improves quality and effectiveness of services. However, having an effective policy or intervention is only part of the overall picture of improving outcomes for people. How well a service or policy is implemented will also influence what it achieves. Implementation science builds on the learning from related disciplines, including change management, improvement science, quality improvement, and project management. Implementation science can help in helping people think about the important factors contributing to successful implementation. It also helps to understand context this includes consideration of a particular community or organizational setting or the broader political, economic or social context. So implementation involves a specific set of purposeful activities that build enablers and create systems that facilitate change. Enablers are also called facilitators. We create systems that facilitate sustainable change or doing something differently. It's about the how as well as the what. It is sometimes called an art as well as a science. You may have heard the terms diffusion, dissemination and implementation and wondered what the difference was between them. Think about the last project you were involved in. Did you let it happen? Help it happen? or make it happen? And how successful is that project today? Would you do anything differently? Implementation doesn't start the day something is launched. It is planned right from the beginning.
unfortunately, effective interventions on their own are not enough to create positive outcomes for clients. And that's why we need implementation science. By intervention, we mean any evidence-informed policy, practice, service or program being implemented. Outcomes are changes that occur to a person, group, organization or population as a result of something being changed. An intervention. These can be short-term, medium or long-term outcomes. We will learn more about outcomes later. This implementation equation has come from the National Implementation Research Network, or NERN. We've already mentioned that effective interventions on their own are not enough to change. We need to look at effective interventions. We need to combine those with effective implementation methods. And we also need to look at the context before we can actually achieve socially significant outcomes. Interventions also need to be implemented with fidelity if they are to have positive outcomes. Fidelity is when it's implemented as it was designed or planned. Think about what makes implementation effective. What programs and organizational supports are needed to implement effective practices? It's worth noting that implementation is inseparable from context. By context, we mean the set of circumstances or unique factors in which implementation takes place. For example, an organization, a community, or the wider system. An intervention may work differently in a university versus a primary school or an acute hospital versus a rural GP clinic. The influence of context explains much of the variation in implementation success. The next section will go through some of the implementation methods that have been shown to be effective. We will go through the four stages of implementation. We'll talk about enablers, which are also called levers or facilitators. We'll talk about implementation teams, who's actually going to deliver the intervention. And we'll talk about continuous improvement cycles. Implementation generally goes through four stages. However, these stages are not linear and you may need to go back and forth throughout the process. Implementation, as we know, takes time. And also, if you skip a stage, you generally will end coming back to it. So stage one in implementing a project is exploring and preparing. In this stage, it's decided which intervention would be implemented. Spend time assessing the needs of those affected by the intervention, as this is a key decision-making phase in the implementation process. Build a supportive climate and identify champions who will drive the change. Activities during this stage include assessing needs, looking at the evidence for the intervention, assessing fit, feasibility, and appropriateness, assessing implementation readiness or readiness to change, developing leadership for implementation, stakeholder engagement to secure buy-in, selecting or designing the intervention and identifying outcomes. Stage two in implementation is planning and resourcing. Here you're laying the foundations for effective implementation. The key activities you need to consider at this stage, including developing an implementation plan, securing the funding, equipment and space, if that's what's required, forming your implementation teams, the people who will ultimately be implementing this intervention, developing procedures for staff, if that's required, and creating feedback mechanisms. Stage three, implementation and operationalization, is often called the getting started phase, as here the intervention is implemented for the first time. This may initially be on a pilot basis before later being fully rolled out. At this stage, you're continuing to manage the expectations of stakeholders and preventing them from becoming disheartened. Activities during this stage include maintaining ongoing communications with key stakeholders, providing ongoing coaching and mentoring for stakeholders, monitoring outcomes, implementation outcomes, service outcomes and client outcomes. You will learn more about these types of outcomes later. Using data and feedback to inform ongoing improvements 
and adapting for local context where appropriate. Stage four, full implementation, is the final stage in implementation and is normally called, referred to as the getting better stage. This is when the intervention is fully operational and integrated and supported by structures and resources. The key activities you will use at this stage is using improvement cycles, assessing the fidelity and outcomes, maintaining skillful practice and producing more efficient and effective infrastructure. At this stage, the outcomes of the intervention are ready to be evaluated. This provides an opportunity to show impact and progress the intervention through continuous improvement cycles. Those involved in implementation should also reflect on the implementation process and learn from experience. This learning can help inform future decisions about implementing other interventions. Implementation is often a focus when something new is being introduced, in other words, change. Using an improvement cycle can provide a structure and process to manage and monitor implementation effectiveness. To make a challenging change process more manageable, the phrase get started, get better is often used in relation to improvement cycles. Using a plan, do, study, act, or PDSA approach, improvement cycles support the purposeful process of change. Improvement cycles help us to identify challenges, solve problems, improve practice, improve fidelity and outcomes, and increase comfort with uncertainty or fear of fear of failure. Implementation teams often use improvement cycles to create change on purpose. You may have heard of implementation enablers and barriers. Enablers or facilitators are factors that increase the probability of successful implementation, while barriers are factors that reduce the probability of successful implementation. Think about a project you are currently working on or worked on in the past. Think of a successful example of implementing a project or intervention. What were the enablers or key factors or facilitators that helped it to be successfully implemented or helped it to go well? You may like to write these down. Think of a project that did not go according to plan. What were the factors that hindered its implementation? What were the barriers which made it more difficult for you to implement the project or initiative? What were the aspects that didn't go so well for you and why? What would you change if you were doing it again? Implementation is about leveraging the enablers and addressing the barriers. Here is an example of a case study that we use in the group sessions. You may want to take a minute to read through it. Once you've read through the case study, you may want to look at the following questions. What are the factors that could help to successfully implement the mask wearing in this town? What already exists that could be developed or used to promote the message about mask wearing? What factors could slow down the implementation? You may like to write these down. Also think about some of the barriers and facilitators you have identified for this case study. Module two <coughs> will go into further detail on barriers and facilitators, and you can see how many you've identified. To finish off this session, I'll outline some of the resources that are available that may be of interest to you. The Implementation Network of Ireland and Northern Ireland was established in 2011. We aim to share experiences of implementation and to build the capacity of people working in services in implementation. We have many members from all sectors, including health, children and families, education, justice, research, and we would invite you to join. We have meetings twice a year, bringing together service uh, users, service uh, providers, managers, policymakers, and practitioners, and we invite you to join us for the next meeting. 
there are some excellent online resources available. The Center for Effective Services, or CES, has developed a guide to implementation, which is available on their website. You can also sign up for quarterly newsletters and weekly knowledge exchange bulletins. There are also online training courses available. The Training Institute for Dissemination and Implementation Research has an eight module online course, which is open access, available online. And also the Centre for Implementation in Canada has courses that are available. Here are some resources available from the Department of Health. The Implementation Guide and Toolkit was developed by the National Patient Safety Office and is available on the Department of Health website. There are also tools available to download, such as the Hexagon tool, Logic Model, Implementation Enablers and Barriers, Implementation Planning tool, and a Monitoring and evalu Evaluation Implementation tool. So you can use these for your own project. There's also recorded trainings available on the NPSO Learning Zone, and there are also lots of materials available through NERN, the National Implementation Research Network. That concludes module one, Introduction to Implementation Science. What is implementation science? There will be three other modules coming. Module two, Determinants and Strategies. Module three, Models and Frameworks. And module four, Monitoring and Evaluation. The next module, module two, covers implementation determinants and strategies, including implementation enablers, implementation barriers, the importance of context, implementation teams, improvement cycles, and implementation strategies. Thank you for joining us for this introductory session on implementation science. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you see the relevance to your practice, and I hope you can join us for the additional sessions. Thank you.